blessing when you call you know my name my song will be for you forever you the music in my heart <coughs>
our celebration. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. On behalf of the Capuchin community, and all of the Father Solana's Guild and Center members, we welcome Archbishop Vigran, Vigran for this uh, commemoration of Venerable Solanus's 60th anniversary of death. And we welcome all of you as well to join in with us in the celebration. Thank you, brother. In the, our Father's house throughout the world today, the Lord's Day, God's daughters and sons are gathered together in order to celebrate Christ's resurrection, to meet the risen Jesus indeed to eat his flesh and drink his blood so that we can share in his rising. It is particularly our blessing today to be gathered near the tomb of the Venerable Solanus, who died, who lived and died, always in this hope. So then we are about to meet Christ. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O oh Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, 
not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request, so God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The Lord to be trusted, the simple find wisdom. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decree of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, they gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, giving light to the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are worth more than gold, than the honey from the cold Lord, the of everlasting life Lord you have the words of everlasting A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord.
With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes out and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus, it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household, who brings from his storeroom both the good, the new, and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. There are days when I find our Lord's way of teaching us in parables a little frustrating. And when I think about it, it's probably because I'm lazy. I like to have the answer plain out there. I'm the sort of person who, when there's a puzzle in the newspaper, I look for the solution before I even try. But our Lord uses the parables to frustrate people like me, and maybe you too. Because our Lord was clearly aware, as a great teacher, that one of the best ways to help all of us embrace and, and dig down deep into understanding the mystery of God's kingdom come into the world is for us to have to think about it, to, to grapple with these comparisons and figures of speech. I'd like to just offer some remarks at the beginning of my preaching today about those comparisons because they do deeply help us understand who we are as disciples of Jesus and, and citizens of the kingdom of God. First of all, belonging to the kingdom of God is always an act of finding. And finding means that something was not lost necessarily, but at least somewhat obscure. Uh, some of you have perhaps helped the Easter Bunny with your children and grandchildren. And so those eggs and those candies weren't lost, but they were hidden. And so the kingdom of God 
is a hidden reality. It's not something right out there in front of us all that uh, can't possibly be overlooked. And then, because God has hidden his kingdom, veiled it perhaps is the right word, it will be claimed by those of us who notice it. We might be like uh, the man who went out into the field and, and was on watch. Certainly, when he found the treasure in the field, he had to be looking or, or nothing would have happened. So you have to watch for, the God, for God's grace and his kingdom and his, his work to save us. Indeed, you're best if you're like the merchant who was searching, who made it his whole life's ambition to find that pearl of great price. The kingdom of God is veiled. You have to be on watch to find it. And then what the Lord tells us with these comparisons is that you have to act. The kingdom of God doesn't fall into your lap. The kingdom of God requires that we disciples take possession of it. As it says in the parables, our Lord tells us that in each case, in the case of the treasure and the case of the pearl, what the finder did was sell everything in order to have the treasure, the pearl of great price. That means that to be in the kingdom of God means that I decided, by the grace of God, that every other good thing in my life is worthless without God's kingdom. And that the kingdom deserves my putting everything that else is good in my life to purchase it, to belong to it, to be part of it. And so in that way, my whole life is integrated and it takes on a direction. The kingdom becomes everything for me. Not that there aren't other goods in my life, but all of those good things, family and home and career and neighborhood and country, all become only worthwhile insofar as they fit in God's kingdom. Now the treasure, of course, the pearl of great price is not something. It's someone. Because the kingdom of God is not so much a place as it is Christ himself. If it's a place, the only place it is, is the heart of Jesus Christ. And so, to be a disciple, to belong to the kingdom, is to have noticed that God has put his greatest treasure, his own son, and made him hidden under the veil of flesh. But we, who have the grace of faith, have, by the power of the Holy Spirit, been able to recognize that Jesus of Nazareth is not some sort of failed prophet. He's certainly not a charlatan, and he was no criminal. But in his suffering, he is God with us, bearing our suffering, so that by his rising, he would restore us to life. And so, we are the ones who have found the pearl. And we are the ones who say that everything is worth anything only because it's part of our friendship with Christ. That's what Jesus meant when he said, if you don't love me more than your father or your mother or your wife or your, your, your husband, you're not, worth, you're not worthy of me because you don't understand who I am. That's who we are. Now, when I was preparing to preach today, my secretary, Father Jim, said, 
have you been there on the 17th Sunday of ordinary time in year A before? And I said, I think I have. He said, how do you know you're not going to give the same homily? <laughs> and I said, I don't. <laughs> so maybe I've said some of these things to some of you before. But these truths, which I have said in years past, have a special meaning today. We always have understood that Father Solanus represents for us the exemplar, kind of the champion, the, the star of how someone discovers the pearl of great price, uncovers the treasure, and gives everything in exchange for it. He's an example, particularly in our time, how many of you here met Father Solanus at one time or another? How many of you have a relative who met Father Solanus at one time or another? So he's a real person for us, not a legend. And he's something for our place, for our community. Very much a gift of God, teaching us how to enter the kingdom of God and, and be disciples. This year is somewhat different, of course, because by God's providence, this is the last time we commemorate Father's death anniversary without being able to celebrate it in the sacred liturgy. Our Holy Father, the Pope, in his great kindness for us, has made a determination that the great favor that was given to one of God's children here in the center is indeed a miracle. And on account of that, the Holy Father has said that Father Solanus can be declared blessed and that at least among the Capuchins and here in our community in Southeast Michigan, very soon we will be able to commemorate Father Solanus among the blessed and the saints. So as I said, this is the last year our celebration of his death anniversary has this peculiar character. And so we give God thanks because not only what we think, what we have long known is the case that Father Solanus is an exemplary disciple teaching us how to be disciples. But now the Pope has said that's true. And we all can rejoice in that, that certitude of Father Solanus being this outstanding example, the one who found the pearl and shows us how valuable the pearl who is Jesus is to us. I'd like to offer, as I move toward the end, two other particular ways that this year, as we look to the beatification, is particular. In my own mind, I'm very much aware that we are moving to the beatification of Father Solanus in this year in which we have uh, moved forward with our work of the new evangelization. Some of you have been kind enough to tell me that you find the pastoral letter unleashing the gospel very inspiring, very encouraging. I will say that in my pastoral leadership to try and help us all be joyful missionary disciples, Father Solanus is an inspiration to me, and, and I hope he is to all of you. Because Father was a great preacher of the gospel. Not from the pulpit, of course, that wasn't a task he was given. But Father preached the good news of God's mercy at the door, in the porter's place, to everybody who came. 
and he did it in a way that's most effective. Pope Francis says that for the gospel to be shared effectively, it has to be passed from person to person. Yes, there's a place for mass media, but in the end, it's about one person touching another. One person sharing her or his faith in Jesus with another, saying by word and deed that I have found the great pearl, the pearl of great price, and I want you to have it too. And that's what Father did. Pope Francis speaks tirelessly about accompaniment, that that's what we need to be as joyful missionary disciples. We need to walk along with people in their troubles and, and share their concerns and help bring them to Christ, who is the only one who can heal them. And Father is an example of that. This year is special. The last July 30th, July 31st, Father's death day, before the beatification. This year is special because it's the year when we uh, launch or let Jesus launch us on the new evangelization. And a third and final way I would say this year is special as we come to remember Father's anniversary is that it's the 50th anniversary of the civil disturbance that was a terrible cataclysm to our community in 1967. You've seen the papers, the news accounts are very full and we remember many many of us how difficult those days were. And it's good that in so many ways the leaders and the rank and file members of our community in this 50th anniversary year are recommitted to justice and to building up a community of peace and, and trying to root out the causes of violence, especially that cause which is racism. But as we are on the threshold of Father's beatification, Father as an example of what it means to find the kingdom and share the kingdom with other people, I am convinced that Father reminds us that it is only by the mercy of Jesus Christ that the evils which led to the wounds of 1967, that is to say sin, that it is only by the mercy and grace of God that those evils can be rooted out and it is only by the grace and mercy of God and the good news of Jesus Christ that those wounds which are still real in our community, we acknowledge it, that it is only by the grace and mercy of God and not only by our efforts, yes, we have to work, but our efforts will fail without the help of Jesus Christ. I believe that's Father's witness to us. I see that, you know, sometimes I, I was talking to Brother Leo's nephew and, you know, how would have been great if Father Solanus had been beatified while Brother was still alive. I think we all agree. But perhaps in God's providence, this was the point. That Father Solanus would be beatified in the, fifth, in the year that marked the 50th anniversary of a great social cataclysm and wound in our community. Precisely so that Father would stand in our midst as an example of what needs to happen to move forward and have these wounds healed. That's what I think. And you don't have to believe me, that's just my thought, but that's how it looks to me. That this is what God has in mind. I said on the day we announced Father's beatification that Father's presence in our midst is a sign that God loves Detroit. And I believe that Father's beatification in this year, 50 years after our civil disturbance, will be a call for all of us to be renewed to the, in the kingdom of God and our confidence 
that it is by only by God's mercy and God's power and God's grace that the divisions in our community can be healed and that we can be on our way to the new and eternal Jerusalem where there is only peace. So it's wonderful that we're all here today. I suspect we're all going to want to be in Ford Field in November. That will be even better. Not, uh, quite so intimate as our gathering today, I think, but uh, it'll be a great blessing. But already, the kingdom of God is here. Every time we celebrate the Eucharist, we are in the kingdom. We're in the presence of the treasure. We get to have the pearl. The pearl is Christ. Christ our food, Christ our drink, Christ so close. Christ promising, as St. Paul recognized, that all things will be able to work for the good because we love God the Father in him. God bless all of you. Thank you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. Sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. By the grace of God, by his incomparable favor, we have been given the pearl of great Christ, life in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> God will not deny us any other good gift we need, and so we pray with confidence. Our prayer response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of a, courage, a courageous faith that the church will constantly strive to fulfill God's will in all things, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for the gift of hope, that all who seek the reign of God will not be discouraged in times of doubt and spiritual darkness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of love, that God may grant us spiritually to be alive in Christ, the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of wisdom, that all who serve in public office may perform their duties with understanding and moral integrity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the gift of reverence that all godly people may display respect for God's word and creation and especially the dignity of others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of compassion that our hearts may respond to the cries of all who suffer, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who come seeking intercession from Father Solanus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members of the Father Solanus Guild, and for those who ask for intercession of Father Solanus Casey and their intentions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the congregation of, for the causes of saints, that they will soon approve a new miracle for the canonization of Father Solanus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For prayers of thanksgiving to God for the life of Father Solanus Casey, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we come to you in all of our needs. Fill us with the riches of Christ. We trust you in all things, and we thank you ahead of time through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and eternal God for in you we live and move and have our being and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you and in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit. Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith. we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may inherit, may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, Spouse, with St. Bonaventure, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely on unfailing God. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation be eternal, Lord, and ask the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm his faith and charity in your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alma Bishop. Your gracious, all the clergy, and the entire people who have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather your children, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give time and visits to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow of the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father From every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace with you. Thank you. Peace with you, Mike. Thank you. Peace to you, David. Thank you. Thank you, David. Peace to you, Tim. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace to you, Father.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my For the reception of communion, we are asking that people come from the back first and come forward. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mary and Joseph, Michael and all angels, Anna, Joachim, and Elizabeth, Elijah, Moses, John the Baptist, Isaac, Sarah, Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Samuel, I said, Jeremiah, all you holy men and women pray for us, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, and all apostles. Barnabas, Matthias, Stephen, Philip, and Cornelius, Prisca, and Aquila, Timothy, and Titus, Linus, Cletus, and Clement, Chrysogonus, Innocent and Boniface, Hippolytus and Origen, Athanasius and Basil, Felicity Perpetua, Cosmos and Damien, Chrysostom and Justin, Lucy, Agatha, and Agnes. All you holy men and women pray for us. Jerome and Eusebius, Scholastica and Benedict. Monica Augustine, Martin and Gregory, Claire Francis and Dominic, Francis Xavier Ignatius, Elizabeth and Catherine, Louis and Wenceslas. Mom. 
Mother Seton and Cabrini, Catherine Drexel Theo Guerin, Rose Duquesne and Dorothy Day, Le Marguerite du Canada, Isaac Jokes and Companions, Catherine Tech with Una Pero Cero, Damien of Molokai. of Lima, Juan Diego, Oscar Romero, Peter Claver, Holy Women of El Salvador, Martyrs of Mexico, Mother Cope and Francis Silo, Pierre Toussaint and John Newman, Brother Andre Salonis, all saints of the Americas, all you holy men and women pray for us. Lord, be merciful. By your death and resurrection, by your gift of the Spirit, have mercy on us sinners. Christ, hear us, Lord Jesus, hear us. new life to your chosen by the grace of baptism O Jesus son of the living God send your spirit in its fullness on your sons and daughters who believe and profess you. find in memory for the love that 
draws us near. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for the grace we receive in you. of God's compassion for the journey that we sing for the word that holds our promise for the gifts that we can claim for the wonders that surround us for the song that sings our name Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brother. At this time, we would like to pray the Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, it is part of our um, prayer for the uh, or for uh, canonization. And um, uh, the reason why we have chosen this Litany of the Blessed Virgin is because of the fact that when he was trying to make his decision as to what he might do with his life, he uh, made a special novena, nine days of both Mass and the Litany to the Blessed Virgin, which at the end of the nine days, the Blessed Mother spoke to him and said, go to Detroit. So here he had come to Detroit. So let us pray this uh, Litany then, please. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ graciously hear us, God the Father of heaven, God the Son, Redeemer of the world, God the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one God, Holy Mary, Holy Mother of God, Holy Virgin of Virgins, Mother of Christ, Mother of Divine Grace, Mother Most Pure, Mother most chaste, pray for us. Mother inviolate, pray for us. Mother undefiled, pray for us. Mother most amiable, pray for us. Mother most admirable, pray for us. Mother of good counsel, pray for us. Mother of our Creator, pray for us. Mother of our Savior, pray for us. Virgin most prudent, pray for us. Virgin most venerable, pray for us. Virgin most renowned, pray for us. Virgin most powerful, pray for us. Virgin most merciful, pray for us. Virgin most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of justice, pray for us. Seat of wisdom, pray for us. Cause of our joy, pray for us. Spiritual vessel, pray for us. Vessel of honor, pray for us. 
Vessel of singular devotion. Pray for us. Mystical rose. Pray for us. Tower of David. Pray for us. Tower of ivory. Pray for us. House of gold. Pray for us. Ark of the covenant. Pray for us. Gate of heaven. Pray for us. Morning star. Pray for us. Health of the sick. Pray for us. Refuge of sinners. Pray for us. Comforter of the afflicted. Pray for us. Help of Christians. Pray for us. Queen of Angels, Pray for us. Queen of Patriarchs, Pray for us. Queen of Prophets, Pray for us. Queen of the Apostles, Pray for us. Queen of Martyrs, Pray for us. Queen of Confessors, Pray for us. Queen of Virgins, Pray for us. Queen of All Saints, Pray for us. Queen conceived without original sin, Pray for us. Queen con con assumed into heaven, Pray for us. Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, Pray for us. Queen of Peace, Pray for us. Queen of the Seraphic Order, Pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Have mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, That we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ, and let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, O Lord, continual health of mind and body, and through the intercession of the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be free from present sorrow and enjoy eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for the advancement of his cause to canonization. O God, I adore you. I give myself to you. May I be the person you want me to be, and may your will be done in my life today. I thank you for the gifts you gave to Father Solanus. If it is your will, bless us with the canonization of Venerable Solanus, so that others may imitate and carry on his love for all the poor and suffering of our world. As he joyfully accepted your divine plan, I ask you accordingly to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. Blessed be God in all his designs. At this time, I would like to thank Archbishop for being here with us and celebrating this special event. Thank you. Thank you. And to, to thank as well all of the uh, con celebrants as well. We certainly appreciate this celebration and all of you for being here as well. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, I'm very mindful that uh, while this is a time of great joy as we all look forward to the 18th of November, this is a time with a lot of extra work for the friars, so you all need to keep them in your prayer, and if you can uh, maybe make a little bit of their work lighter, I'm sure they'd appreciate that. So, I, I would also like to uh, thank the Casey family for coming. There are several members of the Father Solanas Casey family. And we'd like to as well thank the choir, Dennis Shinier and his direction. We thank God for the, the growth of the ministry here and in our response to it. We've for a hundred plus years there was a blessing for the sick every Wednesday and that's been really full and uh, we're realizing that as the numbers that we need to expand this we had been meeting on the fourth Sunday of the month in the af Sunday afternoon we like to make that the second and fourth at two o'clock so August 13th and to kick off this first time that we've had a second Sunday uh, we're going to have a, a musical concert after that blessing. So come here, bring some friends. We'd like to see the, the place full uh, for that. 
God has been good to us. God has been very good to us, and it is ours to respond. Every week, I hear another story of somebody who's had a tremendous blessing. And uh, Solanus has continued his work in our midst. And he calls us to be his fellow workers. Blessed be God in all his designs. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing, make you always holy and pure in his sight, pour out in abundance upon you the riches of his glory, and teach you with the words of truth. May he instruct you in the gospel of salvation and ever endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks to God. Our closing song this afternoon is number 569 in the green hymnal. We'll use verses 1, 2, and then the fifth verse at the bottom. Thank you. Oh 